If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. Your company's Accounts Receivable account monitors the amounts of goods and services sold to customers. When a transaction posts to Accounts Receivable, Sage 50 first updates the associated journal and then posts the amounts to the general ledger. The first part of working with the company's accounts receivables was done when the customer defaults were created after the initial creation of the company file. Within the customer defaults, you set the standard customer terms, invoice aging, and more. Once that is done, you can then turn to adding customers to your customer list. When you add new customer records, their default information matches any settings specified by the customer defaults. However, you can change this information for the specific customer record when creating it, if needed. After that, you only need to enter the unique information for each customer. To add new customers in Sage50 Accounting, select Maintain. Customers slash prospects from the menu bar to open the Maintain Customers or Prospects window. If needed, then click the New button in the toolbar at the top of the window. Type a new customer ID into the Customer ID field at the top of the window. This is the code you use to uniquely identify your customers. Then click into the Name field and type a name for this new customer. This is the name to show on reports and invoices. To mark the customer as a prospective customer, check the Prospect checkbox. You might check this for a customer for whom you have created an estimate but have not yet performed any actual work or invoicing. You cannot invoice a prospect, so be aware of that if you use this feature. They become regular customers once you clear this checkbox. You use the Inactive checkbox to make a customer record inactive. To inactivate an existing customer record, simply select their ID from the Customer ID dropdown, check the Inactive checkbox, and then click the Save button in the toolbar at the top of the window. To enter general customer information if creating a new customer, click the General tab, which contains basic customer billing and contact information. Here you can input the information for the bill to contact for the customer record. You can enter the customer's account number if assigned into the account number field. Then enter the billing address in the billing address fields available. Then enter the city, state, zip, and country fields for the billing address. Select the customer's default sales tax code from the sales tax dropdown if needed. You must assign one tax code for each ship to address you enter. Optionally, you can type a custom customer type into the field of the same name or select a choice from prior entries you made from its dropdown. Later, you can use this value as a filter for reporting and finance charge purposes. Then type the main and secondary phone numbers into the Telephone 1 and Telephone 2 fields. If needed, type the fax number into the fax field. Then enter the customer's email address into the email field. If needed, type the website address for the customer's company into the website field. To copy the billing information you just entered to the Ship Address 1 fields that appear on the Contacts tab, click the Copy to Ship Address 1 button in the General tab. Notice that after you create a customer and invoice them for goods or services, you can then view the current amount of their receivables balance on this tab. To see the list of invoices which make up the current balance, Click the actual balance amount shown in this tab to display a listing of the invoices that constitute the receivable balance shown. If needed, enter the specific values for the custom fields you created for customers in the Customer Defaults window, which now appear in the Customizable Fields section on the General tab. 
if the customer has multiple contacts. Then click the Contacts tab to record additional contact information for multiple contacts at a single company. To create a new contact, click the New Contact button on this tab. Then enter the contact information into the field shown. To enter a new address for the selected contact, click the Edit Addresses button to open the Contact Addresses window where you can enter the various addresses used by the company. When finished, click the OK button. You can then select an address for the current contact from the Addresses dropdown on the Contacts tab. To save the contacts information after editing it, click the Save Contact button. Also, to delete a contact that you no longer need, select a contact from the Select a Contact dropdown and click the Delete Contact button. Note that some contacts are needed by Sage50 and cannot be deleted, like the Primary Billing contact. If you need to enter outstanding invoices and amounts the customer owes to the company as of the company file start date, click the History tab and then click the Customer Beginning Balances button. Then enter any invoices that need to be received as of the start date of the company file into the separate window that appears. You can then click the Save and Close buttons in the toolbar at the top of the window when you are finished. The History tab also shows sales, receipts, last invoice, and payment information for the selected customer. This is updated every time you enter a transaction for a customer in Sage 50. You can enter historical information when creating a new customer if desired. This information is then automatically updated by Sage 50 as you create customer transactions in the future. The Sales Info tab lets you enter sales information for the customer record. This tab shows sales reps, shipping methods, pricing levels, and the general ledger sales account used by the customer. If needed, to select a sales representative for the customer, select or choose one from the Sales Rep field. To set the default general ledger income account to which most transactions for this customer post, select a choice from the GL Sales Account field. Of course, you can also change this on a per transaction level if needed. If needed, to enter an open PO number for customers that have an open purchase order with your company, enter it into the Open PO Number field. To select the default shipping service for sending merchandise to this customer, select them from the Ship Via field. You can always change this at the time of sale, too. To record the tax ID number of customers that purchase items from you for resale, enter their resale number into the Resale Number field. To set a default pricing level for the customer, select one from the Pricing Level field. You can always change this when invoicing them too. To choose how to send the customer batch forms, select either the Printed Form or Email Option button in the Form Options section. When you print batch forms, like statements, from the Select a Reporter form window, this choice determines whether the form is printed or automatically emailed. For email delivery, to also email the customer's sales rep whenever a sales form is emailed to this customer using batch processing, check the email sales rep when using batch processing to send forms checkbox. You must also select a sales rep in the sales default section of this tab and enter the email address for the selected sales rep on the general tab in the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window for the sales rep's record. To replace the item ID in batch forms with either the item's UPC or SKU or part number, check the Replace Item ID With checkbox and then select either the UPC slash SKU or Part Number option button. To set specific sales terms for this customer that override the standard terms set by your customer defaults, 
click the Payment and Credit tab first. Then, in the Terms and Credits section, use the drop-down to select the Customized Terms for this customer choice. Then set the specific sales terms applied to only this customer in the section below the drop-down menu. The Payment and Credit tab also lets you store payment information used for customer receipts. If the customer pays most frequently by credit card, you can enter the cardholder's name field with the name on their credit card used for purchases. You can also type the address, which will default to the billing address information automatically. You cannot store customer credit cards locally, but you can click the View Slash Edit Credit Card Details link to open a credit card data window where you can view the options for securely storing credit card data for customers online. Likewise, to view the same window for bank ACH information, click the View Slash Edit Bank Account Details link under the ACH Information section. The Receipt Settings section lets you specify the default payment settings for the selected customer. If the checkbox for Use Payment Method and Cash Account from Default Settings is checked, the Payment Method and Cash Account fields in the Receive Money window default to the values set by the Customer Default Settings. Alternatively, to set a default Payment Method and Cash Account for the customer's payments when you select this customer in the Receive Money window, uncheck this checkbox, and then select the default Payment Method and Cash Account to use, from the Payment Method and Cash Account drop-down. To save the new customer record when finished, click the Save or Save and New button to either only save the record or both save the record and create a new customer record, respectively. Remember to click the Subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.